Johan Zuse is picking Jatropha seeds at his home in Chikwawa, southern Malawi. He's getting ready for an upcoming agricultural show and wants to make some oil. He later uses this oil press made from a kajak to crush the seeds for oil. Two of the machines were recently installed by the Malawi government and foreign donors to help residents easily express biofuels. We have gained a lot from Jatropha seeds because we can make soap from the oil. We don't need to buy soap in this village anymore. In the past we used to spend a lot of money buying soap and paraffin, but now we no longer spend that money because we can produce it ourselves. The Jatropha oil can also be used to light lamps that come in handy at night. It produces some carbon dioxide when burnt, but not as much as fossil fuels like paraffin. On the day of the show, residents came out to share and learn about the multiple uses of Jatropha, Neem and Moringa trees, collectively referred to as Janino tree. Today, Johan is showing visitors how to turn Jatropha oil into soap. What I've seen here is terrific, marvelous. This is one way of reducing poverty in a rural setting like this. The event is part of an effort by the Scottish and Malawian governments to encourage communities here to grow Janimo trees around their homes and farms. The project was started in 2008 and wants to promote use of sustainable energy resources. Grain Malunga is the Minister for Energy, Natural Resources and Environment. The past 10 years, the economy has grown at a faster rate and what that means it is that there is growth in energy demand as well. But uh, we did not match the economic gains, the economic development against our energy needs. So we are now concentrating much in terms of uh, energy generation using hydropower, using solar and wind, wind hybrid systems. But at the same time, we want to go into biomass energy. Nearby, a group of women demonstrate how to make relish from marina leaves. The tree's leaves can also be used to make vegetable oil. By eating moringa, we are getting stronger and stronger. Even our children were weak and now they are healthy. It's not just humans who can benefit from moringa. Makduf Mwafumu, a chicken farmer, feeds his brood on moringa leaves, which he says improves the nutritional value of the eggs they lay. You can see the car. The one which is fed in uh, sangua leaves is deep in car and in vitamin A content is high to compare with the one which is not fed in Moringa's leaves. Away from the event, Johani Chipembele showed us how his neem trees have helped increase his income. He's a traditional healer and uses the plant to make medicine for patients. Yohani also sells firewood from his trees instead of cutting down those in the forest. This is a neem tree. We prune the leaves and pound them into a powder form, which we use as a medicine for malaria and stomach aches. Charcoal production still poses a major threat to Malawi's indigenous forests and the Department of Forestry is struggling to make illegal loggers understand the importance of the country's forests. Every week, illegal traders are arrested as they try to smuggle charcoal in various towns. Charcoal is supposed to move with the license. Unfortunately, uh, none of these people who transport the charcoal have got licenses. So uh, the only option that we have is to uh, to confiscate and uh, we do take these people to court.
Meanwhile, critics say that biofuel crops threaten food security because they are grown on land meant for food crops. On its part, Malawi is working to boost its food production alongside biofuels. After a devastating dry season in 2005, the government introduced seed and fertilizer distribution programs, which increased harvests and saw the country export maize to neighbors like Zimbabwe. Another project to transform organic waste into biogas has also been introduced in Chikwawa. Zimbabwean farmer Jona Chisumo is working with an organization known as Entech to install biodigesters in schools here. He uses similar ones to run two engines on his farm. So how it works is that the initial dung kicks off the biodigesting process and we create methane. We then take that methane, which is a greenhouse gas, but in this way we then use it and the byproduct is water and, and energy. We tap it through the pipe to a stove that we put in, 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 the, in the class or uh, a light so that we can extend the study period for the, for the school kids. Malawi's carbon emissions are some of the lowest in the world. Practices like these improve people's lives, but if they are not replicated in other parts of the world, the environment will continue to struggle with the effects of decades of neglect.